Hi, welcome to another episode of the Artist Gallery. Uh, if you are one of my students, please make sure that you have your images packet and a writing utensil. You're going to want to include the images that we look at for this particular artist, either cut them out and tape them or glue them into your sketchbook or your art journal, and make sure that you're taking the notes that appear in the white boxes that pop up onto the screen. I'll remind you as we get there. Also, please don't forget that we have a journal entry at the end of our artist gallery discussion today, and that there will be a quiz online on the Google Classroom. So this episode of the artist gallery, let me just whoop, move myself over here to the side, um, is all about American artist Kadir Nelson. Uh, Kadir Nelson is a contemporary artist, and that means that he is a current artist who is working right now. Uh, his work is extremely popular. Uh, he was born uh, May 15th in 1974 in Silver Spring, Maryland. Uh, he is only in his mid-40s. And he is uh, known for paintings and illustrations that are about injustice and social change. He's done a lot of work, but that is the type of work that we're going to focus on in our discussion today. Uh, so Kadir Nelson, the award-winning American author and artist, is based now in Los Angeles, California. He received his Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from Pratt University, which is an amazing art school in Br Brooklyn, New York. Uh, when he graduated from Pratt, he was summoned by DreamWorks Pictures to create conceptual artwork for Steven Spielberg and his Oscar-nominated feature Amistad and the animated feature called Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron. Uh, he's a recipient of multiple awards from the Society of Illustrators in New York, including the prestigious Hamilton King Award, as well as the 2020 recipient of the Caldecott Medal and the Coretta Scott King Award for Illustration. Now, he has won the Caldecott uh, medal and the Coretta Scott King Award multiple times over his career. Uh, he has created artwork for a host of distinguished clients. Uh, you can see a few of them on the screen right now, uh, including but not limited to National Geographic, HBO, Nike, Disney, Hennessy, and Sony Music. His masterful artwork also frequently graces the cover of the New Yorker magazine, as well as Rolling Stone, paying tribute to historical and contemporary American figures in New York City and abroad. So let's look at uh, some more examples, but before we do that, the wonderful thing about talking about contemporary and current artists like Kadir Nelson is that we can hear directly from them as they talk about their process and their own artwork. So um, we're going to watch this video here in a minute. Myself as simple as possible. <coughs> and uh, we're going to hear Kadir Nelson talk about his In downtown work. Los Angeles, the sounds of the city <coughs> blend with the sounds of soul. Curious the artist uh, is Kadir Nelson. You may not know who he is. You should. But you'll find his work on the covers of magazines, albums, on posters, and postage stamps. Then there are the children's books, more than two dozen of them. The subjects may vary, but the theme is unmistakable. As a young kid, I didn't really see a lot of representations of African Americans. I felt like I had a self-appointed responsibility to tell that story, that children who would go to museums or art galleries or open their books and see images uh, that look like them and, and be proud of those images. Images like Shirley Chisholm, the first black woman elected to Congress, and baseball players from the Negro League, also civil rights activist Harriet Tubman. And then there is this portrait of Nelson Mandela, his fist raised in rebellion against apartheid. I like to choose subjects that are spiritually strong and internally strong uh, because that's how I want to see myself. So when he was commissioned to create the cover for the 90th anniversary of The New Yorker, Nelson took the publication's mascot, Eustace Tilly, and reimagined him as a contemporary African-American man, a modern-day aristocrat, swapping his old-school eyeglass for an iPhone. How old were you when you were drawing something like that? That looks like it was from high school. 
He says his parents always encouraged his talent, but the inspiration for the elongated form found in much of Nelson's early work actually came from a TV show. Nelson was a big fan of good times and those paintings in the opening and closing credits. They were the work of artist Ernie Barnes, but passed off on the show as the art of character J.J. Evans, played by Jimmy Walker. I was probably about five or six years old, and I can see um, an African-American artist on television who likes to draw and paint just like I do. He also idolized Michael Jackson. Years later, the phone rang. Michael Jackson called. And we spoke on the phone, and he told me how much he really liked, um, loved the, the Marvin Gaye paintings. And he said, I want one. Uh, but about me. And I want it to be bigger. <laughs> this was the result. Finished after the superstar's death, it became the cover of Jackson's posthumous <coughs> album. Nelson's work is also owned by Will Smith, George Lucas, Spike Lee, and actress, director, and choreographer Debbie Allen. Kadir speaks from a place of such quiet scream, I would say. Quiet scream. I call it quiet scream because he's a quiet person. He's a gentle person, but his art is just screaming at you. It is begging you to go in and experience and feel. It was Allen who convinced Nelson to illustrate a children's book she wrote. Sassy is her name. <laughs> Ever since I was born and could see, everywhere I looked, I saw dance. But these aren't just any children's books. They are some of the few that depict children of color. When a child opens a book and sees a face that looks like them, they know that they matter. This is uh, called Stick Ballers. And it's Nelson's paintings may look historical. He's been compared to Norman Rockwell. But look closer and you'll realize he's painting something that rarely, if ever, happened. Black and white kids playing together in the 1930s. It's not likely that that could have happened, given the times. But it's great to imagine that it could have. This is what it could have looked like had things been different. There's nothing different Kadir Nelson can imagine doing with his life. Because when that music starts to play and his subject, the late Muhammad Ali, comes into focus, his paintbrush starts to sing. I'm proud that I get to do what I love every day, to express myself creatively every day of the week. It's a pretty good gig. It's the best gig there is. Oh, there it is. Uh, it's just fantastic. So um, I want to show you a, a lot of examples of Kadir Nelson's artwork. Uh, he's done so many types of things, so we're only going to be able to pick and choose a few. Uh, but this is a very recent cover of Rolling Stone magazine. The painting on the cover is called American Uprising. It was painted just a few months ago in 2020. Uh, and this is an illustration done with oil paints. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> And so as you can see on the cover, this is a response uh, to the killing of George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter movement that happened right in uh, the spring of 2020. He paints this immediately afterwards, responding to this, uh, this horrible event. Uh, and the painting that he's done is based on a historical image of the French Revolution. So I'm going to let uh, Kadir Nelson again explain his artwork because he can certainly do it much better than I can. But that painting is one you'll need to have in yeah, your sketchbook. A different cover story planned for the July issue, but the tragic death of George Floyd and just the public outcry and the call for justice, the protest, the unrest, it was just too big of a topic for us to ignore. We had to do something about it. So we turn to Kadir Nelson, who, when you look at his body of work, is just fantastic. He's one of the preeminent artists of our day right now. He focuses on African-American culture and history, and he treats it with such dignity and gravitas. We thought that he could come up with the perfect concept for our cover, and it was the perfect balance of what we needed for the cover. It sent a statement 
a call for change, but it also reflects our culture right now and what the mood of the nation and the world is right now. We need change, and this cover communicates that. I was very flattered uh, to be asked to create a painting for the cover of Rolling Stone that would speak to what's going on in the world. I think that the uh, Black Lives Matter movement is very important in that it's uh, provoking a very long overdue conversation about race and its relationship to America. They wanted something that would be very hopeful and inspirational. I thought immediately of a painting by Jean Delacroix uh, called Liberty Leading the People. A woman who is leading the, the French Revolution with a flag, raised flag. Her arm is raised, there's a, a, a boy next to her. So I wanted to create something in a similar vein that would have the same feeling and celebrate this tipping point in our, in our history. One of the, my favorite uh, parts of the painting is the woman's face and the, the scarf, the American flag around her neck, which is showing how patriotic she is. This woman loves America, and there's, you know, there's hope and vigor in her posture, as well as the little boy next to her. In American Uprising, the catalyst was George Floyd, and it drew on the larger picture of discrimination and violence against African Americans. The, the people who were pushing for those changes were African American women. They are, are very much at the forefront in spearheading this change. So I thought it was very important for an African American woman to be at the very center of this painting because they have very much been at the center of this movement. I think what's really most important when knowing that a painting is finished is how I feel when I look at it. And when I look at this painting, I'm, I'm, I feel very hopeful. We all have gifts and, and attributes and strengths of our own, and we can all make changes in our own ways. I'm providing um, images that will inspire conversations, that will provoke people to have conversations about what's going on, that will inspire people to join in on the conversations and take action. I want everyone in this painting, particularly the African-American women and children to know that they matter, and that they have the power to create change in the world. This painting is to honor, celebrate them, and to, to inspire them to continue doing what they're doing because what they're doing is important work. Isn't it just beautiful? I think the image is exceptional. He's such a gifted painter. And, and it does a wonderful job of communicating, I think, the concept. Uh, but this is just a great example. Oh, that was loud. I wasn't expecting that. That's a great example, though, of how art can communicate a, a message. Right? And Kadir Nelson is the master of that. Uh, and he's done it many, many times. So here's another very recent uh, paintings say their names. This was on the cover of The New Yorker from June 22nd, 2020. So he just finishes the painting this summer. Um, and it, of course, is about uh, the fight against police brutality uh, against Black Americans. And what I love is inside of the silhouette here are the faces of all different uh, Black Americans who've been killed by police brutality. So he doesn't make this just about one person. Right, although you know the, the killing of George Floyd was the catalyst for the the big you know uh, protests that happened this summer, and and certainly for this image, but the image is about more than just that. It's showing well, maybe he's the the reason why we're having this conversation now. But there's so much more that makes up uh, the the history of what's happened in the country. So he includes that. Uh, as well as uh, newspaper headlines, uh, recreations of photos <coughs> of some of these killings right, included inside the body of this figure. So not only are they incredibly powerful and moving images, but they're exceptionally painted. I, I feel like his artwork is, is, is a combination of photorealism and, and, and this kind of uh, uh, 
altered expression. They're, they're a little bit exaggerated. They, they have a caricature element, but they're incredibly true to life. Uh, his portraits are all immediately recognizable. And the way he handles the paint, you can see it a little bit in that last video where they showed a bit of his process while he was doing that uh, cover for Rolling Stone. But his painting ability is absolutely incredible. I mean, you don't see a single stroke or mark on his paintings. They're so smooth. They're, uh, they have so much power, so much light in them. I think they're absolutely incredible. So this is an image that you should uh, include the second image that should be in your art journals, Say Their Names in 2020 by Kadir Nelson. So this is an image that you might recognize. <coughs> uh, this well, is, the, uh, is art that was used for the cover of Drake, Nothing Was the Same album. Um, it was painted in 2013. <laughs> uh, and uh, when Drake contacted Kadir Nelson that he wanted him to do the cover of the album, he said that he wanted something that didn't look like a rap album cover. And so he asked for something that was completely different, something that was a lot more personal, that he thought would go with the, the style of music from that album. So Kadir Nelson creates a painting that shows two versions of Drake. There is his current self on the right, and then himself, that's Drake, as a young child on the left, and they're both looking right at each other. So Drake is looking back at you know, his upbringing, what, what, what he used to be, and that's this young kid um, looking up at the, the celebrity that he's going to become. Again, they're incredibly realistic. Look at this, the way the light like hits these features, the way the skin tones are painted, and the way that like the light reflects off of them. Even the, the stubble, right, this very close shave hair that's painted is just amazing. Uh, he's an incredibly gifted artist. So the, the album cover, it was just this section on the front, but this is the, the full artwork. Um, this is a piece that we showed in the first video. This is the King of Pop. Uh, you do not need to uh, write this one down. It was painted in 2011, Michael Jackson called up Kadir Nelson and asked him to, to make this painting. Um, this painting was listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as the largest poster in the world. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, all hand painted, it's nine feet long by four and a half feet tall, and it shows uh, almost every aspect of Michael Jackson's life, starting with the, the Jackson Five, right, that are over here, uh, that are all of his siblings, Right included here, there are so many small little symbolic elements throughout the painting. There are images of Michael Jackson from his famous concerts, videos, uh, album covers, tours, uh, all sorts of images that relate to him. So I think this combination of elements is incredible. Now, unfortunately, Michael Jackson passed away before he was able to see the finished painting, so he never got to see it. Uh, but we can uh, see it now in the center section was used as a cover for the album of Michael Jackson's music that was released uh, after his death. And then the last image that I want to show you, uh, and I just included this, again, he had so many amazing artworks to show and so many uh, children's books that he's illustrated, but I chose this cover uh, for a book uh, by Marvel Comics about uh, the new Spider-Man, Miles Morales. Uh, the character that is a half black, half Latino teenager uh, living in Brooklyn, New York, and he uh, inherits the Spider-Man powers and he becomes a new Spider-Man. Uh, and so you can see that Kadir Nelson does these incredibly realistic paintings. Uh, they're, they're about things that are culturally uh, significant between music and entertainment, right? books, comics, uh, posters, uh, as well as, as you know, cultural event, which I think is just uh, amazing. And I love this depiction of the character. I think uh, he's got such a great expression on his face. He's very serious. Um, the way the fingers are splayed out, showing he's, he's you know, landed right on the surface of this train car. I think it's just amazing. Uh, he's, he's one of my favorite current artists. I think that Kadir Nelson is absolutely incredible. Uh, and I just, I just love this piece of artwork.
So before we wrap up our Kadir Nelson discussion, I do have the journal prompt for you. So write this into your journal after uh, you've included all of those artworks. How do you think that art can talk about current events? Uh, and what art have you seen with a social, political, or environmental message? So this doesn't have to necessarily be specifically about Kadir Nelson's work, although he does, certainly has examples of that. But what other types of artwork, you know, have you seen that, that has some kind of a message? And how do you think art can talk to us about these things? What's art's role in uh, current events and social messages? I right, thank you for tuning in, and I will uh, talk to you next week.